Hello, my name is Kathleen Riley. And I'm Mitch Hinton. We are undergraduate students at Tulane University studying ecology and evolutionary biology. Funded by the National Science Foundation and as pupils of science, we were able to travel to Northern Territory, Australia in order to conduct field-based research pertaining to the effects of environmental disturbance on native birds. And then it's just case stop. Northern Territory Australia can be classified as a seasonal tropical savanna. Though temperature varies little between the two seasons, we typically see high levels of humidity and precipitation, described as monsoonal, during the wet season, and low levels of humidity and precipitation during the dry season. Fire is common during the dry season and can have profound effects, though poorly understood, on ecological systems due to changes in the structure of plants and animal communities. Fire typically causes the immediate destruction of dense, grassy understory, which can allow for the growth of new vegetation and creates a patchwork effect of differing vegetation densities and types throughout the landscape. It is thought that this patchy landscape can promote an increase in the diversity of life in these habitats. Our study focused on the red-backed fairy wren, an insect-loving, grass-dwelling songbird native to these fire-prone areas of northern Australia. Perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of this species is that they are socially monogamous, yet sexually promiscuous, which means that they form stable male-female pair bonds but tend to bear young outside of those bonds. This means that males may not necessarily be caring for their own young. These birds are also cooperative breeders. Just like recently graduated college students looking for work, young males may remain home and surrender breeding opportunity to help care for siblings. Red-backed fairy wrens are also sexually dimorphic, meaning breeding males and females have differing feather coloration. Socially dominant, reproductively active males molt into a striking black with prominent crimson feathers on their backs, whereas non-breeding males and females maintain a predominantly brown coloration. The red-backed fairy wren has been used as a model organism for examining the flexibility of social behavior and physiological strategies in the face of ecological uncertainty due to a changing environment. Because much of the work concerning them has revolved around breeding season behavior, much more work is required to examine the carryover effects of non-breeding behavior and social structure into the breeding season. This work has been important to us and the members of our field of study, but why is it important that we study a focal species and how can studies like this benefit society? We study a focal species of bird because such a study makes it possible to explore the subtleties of the questions we are attempting to answer by conducting more complete inclusive and detailed observations involving behavior and physiology. Models are a fantastic means to simplify the complexities that we observe in nature so that we may better understand how they operate. The data collected from the field can be used to create predictive models of general behavior in environmentally unstable situations. The beauty of the scientific process is that it is an iterative process. The work that we do here will be used to build the foundations for future research, which in turn will be used to build foundations for even more research. Nothing is ever certain, but we can find evidence in support or rejection of our hypotheses and predictions. It is in this fashion that the human race has made scientific progress, and it is in this fashion that we will continue to grow in our understanding of the fundamental processes of nature. It is more than just the pursuit of knowledge and the satisfaction of appealing curiosity that drives scientists in their quest to identify, categorize, and understand the natural world. We look to contribute to a vast collective of knowledge that, so that we may make a lasting impact on the way our species views and handles our place in the biosphere. In doing so, we attempt to create a world in which Homo sapiens can exist without significantly altering the structure and processes of nature. Processes which intimately affect us just as much, if not more, than we affect them. We would like to thank the National Science Foundation, Richard Luxton for allowing us to conduct research on his property, and our advisors, Sam Lance, Dr. Caruvian, Dr. Swaddle, and Dr. Webster.